Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to the uh, another lecture of uh, uh, applied analytics, a practitioner's approach on descriptive, prescriptive and predictive analytics. And uh, today we are getting into the uh, new concepts, new aspects of descriptive stats and other related tools, uh, because so far we have seen the philosophy and other aspects of the analytics. And now we are going to see how we learn some tools and how we apply them to a set of data. So, today we will start looking into the importance of the concepts of statistics and analytics and we will see what statistics uh, for us means. So, this we are going to look at from a practitioner's viewpoint, practitioner's viewpoint, okay. Uh, sorry, I can't spell properly, so you guys have to find the right spelling. So, uh, let us take a look into it, statistics. Okay. Uh, the title itself is kind of funny, statistics really, because everybody thinks that uh, um, statistics is something that they know about what it is. And uh, many of the people the, who are involved in um, analytics, so the uh, so-called analytics expert, so-called analytics experts, okay, their definition of statistics is a branch of a branch of science or maths that deals with collecting, organizing, presenting, analyzing and interpreting data. So, it involves data collection, ok. So, that is one of the reasons why sometimes you talk about data collection, which sometimes gives the concepts of sampling, ok. Then you have organizing. And where we are talking about grouping, uh, binning, classification, etc. Okay, so that aspects. So we will study some of those tools. Then presenting. Okay, we are talking about uh, graphical presentations. Okay, then we are talking about uh, descriptive stats. Okay, that aspects. Then analyzing, so we talked about analysis, so analyze, analysis will be like hypothesis testing, okay, correlation, stuff like that, ANOVA, they all come in this. Okay. Interpreting is the how do we interpret the results the findings, okay. So, this is the classical viewpoint of what is statistics, but for a practitioner, okay, uh, we can think about statistics, it as a, uh, let us think about as nothing more than the use of arithmetic tools arithmetic tools to examine uh, numeric data data that has been collected collected so that decisions can be made. So, the practitioner's viewpoint or the practitioner's approach focuses on the decisions uh, and it is more about for them or the practitioners it is more about a set of arithmetic tools or the usage of arithmetic tools to examine the numeric data that has been collected. So, here okay, you will ask obviously then what happened to the other data alphanumeric data that is a different part uh, which is not too much of importance to us, but here the importance is mostly on the numeric data. 
because the data collection has been done. So, this numeric data who collected the numerical data mostly it comes from the mostly comes from the business intelligence intelligence or what we call as the BI as such it is basically involves collecting organizing and storing the data. And these tools these arithmetic tools you can think about these tools to be divided into two forms ok. And uh, what we are going to say is that the tools can be thought about in two fashion. The first one is that is what we call as the descriptive tools descriptive tools and the second one we can call it as the inferential tools inferential tools. So, the descriptive tools what does the descriptive tools mean these tools they help in understanding the data understanding the data by providing they help in understanding the data by providing the ability to organize the ability to organize organize and summarize it. summarize what summarize the data. So, the aim here in the descriptive tools is they help us to understand the data by ability providing us the ability to organize and summarize. So, here the aim is to more to organize and summarize the data whereas, in the inferential tools it is they help in making decisions or they help in making or making inferences based on data. So, here you are thinking about making inferences based on the data that is what is going on in this part ok. Uh, so, inferences means some conclusions you are concluding based on what you are thinking about at this point ok. Now, the uh, analytics in a way so, you can think about analytics as based on statistics ok. So, since it is based on statistics what we are trying to do here is we can think about it as a six step processes because for practitioners we like to have uh, stepwise approach ok. So, since it is a six step, six step processes. So, we can talk about as the uh, step 1 uh, being identifying or identify let us call it as a verb identify the decision making problem ok. So, this implies understanding the problem the problem that is being investigated and this is important and why is it being investigated. So, at this juncture what we are supposed to do is we have to identify the decision making problem identify why it is a problem and why is it being investigated ok. Uh, so, that is the aspect in this and to facilitate this to facilitate this or uh, which means this understanding or identification ok. 
either one of them we can think about asking few set of questions okay ask the following these questions will help in understanding making us understand why this is a problem and why is it to be investigated first question is how is this a problem okay second question is why investigating this problem is important is important not to you important to the organization okay because we are thinking from a applied standpoint then the third question is what is or are the causes or the cause the causes of this problem okay what is the reason behind the problem next question you can think about it is what could be could be some possible solutions okay so all these questions okay all of them all of these in a broad sense okay you not looking for exact answers but you are looking for a broader answers help to develop the what we call as the most important thing problem statement okay so all these questions so the japanese philosophy in this case is they talk about 5w 1h okay that is one approach the japanese do what where when who why okay these are the 5w's okay and then the next one is how and the japanese philosophy says that if you follow this approach this 5w1h approach you would be able to re reasonably define what's a problem statement what we are saying here is similar one but somewhat broader questions uh, not really in the particular pinpointed questions but these questions to a large extent help us to broadly develop the problem statement okay and why do we need the problem statement because this step identifies clearly or it should identify clearly or it should identify okay clearly what is going to be investigated okay what are we going to study investigated this is to be clearly stated why so that proper decision can be made so if the problem statement is not clear then the decision will also not be clear so this is where the phrase that the most famous phrase called gaigo comes into picture which means garbage in garbage out so if you have a clear problem statement if you have been able to identify the problem properly then because of that proper decision can also be made so the first steps aim is to identify the decision making problem so understand what the problem is being investigated and why is it being investigated okay and then there are set of questions that will help us to develop the problem statement and from there once you have the problem statement clearly defined then proper decisions can be made now we get to the second steps step 2 and step 3 okay so the step 2 is to a large extent is state the hypothesis or what we can call it as uh, what does it means is 
hypothesis hypothesis is nothing but the belief belief of the analyst on what will be found will be found at the end of analysis okay it is your belief okay what will be found at the end of analysis or what will happen if the problem is investigated so uh, the aim is here is that you are stating your belief the analyst belief on what will be found at the end of analysis so it is kind of saying that okay we start doing the analysis this is what i believe or this is what we think it will happen if this investigation is conducted why it is important because because stating the hypothesis hypothesis is the import is the first important step in understanding understanding how to investigate the problem okay so the how to investigate the problem is given by the uh, by clearly stating the hypothesis so let's take an example okay an example of a tire manufacturing company okay tire manufacturer okay assume that this company is manufacturing tires for tires for odd cars okay not automobiles cars so a car require four tires four tire tires plus one stepney or one backup okay this company manufactures these tires and the aim is that this company is trying to say that the tire by this let's call this as company a okay company a the tire by this company a tire by this a company is better than other tires in the market if this is the claim made by the company okay and if it is a problem that is what something that need to be investigated so then what is the hypothesis at this point or how do we state the hypothesis at this point the hypothesis you can loosely state that okay uh, so if this if this is what you want to prove or this is what you want to investigate that whether the tire is better than the existing tires in the market if not then what will happen we the answer is that the tire is as bad as other tires that are available in the market so you can say that the new tire is better than others okay that's one option uh, uh, the other way to think about it is if not the new tire is only as good as others in the market this is one way to look into it so here you are basically say, trying to prove that the tire is as good as or better okay if you say that the new tire is bad than the other tires in the market then the investigation that you are going to look for is the other way so this is the same way the judiciary system makes the premises that person is innocent this is the presumption or the assumption or the belief okay and if the person is not innocent if not then guilty okay 
So, this kind of an approach, this kind of a statement, okay, in a pairwise belief, you have a belief and if that belief is not happening, then what is going to be the next one? That is what we call as a hypothesis or stating this in some mathematical form or a ver verbal form, it does not matter. That is what your hypothesis is. So, then all your analysis in the second case is to the what the police will do, they will only try to find evidences to prove guilt. Okay. So, the same thing, if we do this, then we only look for evidences in this case to prove superiority of tire. So, the analysis, how will you do the analysis is determined by how you state your hypothesis. Then step 3, step 3 is simply put identify the cause. Okay. So, what does this mean here is that, so in better words it is when the analyst states the hypothesis, then what happens? It results or uh, forces them them to identify identify what they believe as the cause of the cause of it as the cause of it okay or in a better way what we are thinking about it is what has forced it to occur. Okay. So, when we think about the tire manufacturer, when they say that the tire is better, better, the question is what makes it better? Maybe the answer is new process or new material, something like this. So, this is where you are identifying the cause, why, what has resulted in uh, the occurrence of the problem. The typically in statistics terms, this cause, this identified cause, this identified cause uh, is usually known as the independent variable. Okay. We call it as the independent variable. So, the cause, the one that resulted in this particular uh, behavior or belief is what we call as the independent variable. Because of it, the phenomenon is being observed. Okay. Most of the time, independent variable variable will have two or more levels. This is the tricky one uh, because what happens is in this case if you think about it the sulfur content let us call it as the sulfur content is the reason for the tire quality is responsible for tire quality. If that is the case, then you can possibly say that the sulfur content can be 5 percent, 10 percent, 15 percent something like this and one of the setting will along with some other values will give you the a good quality tire. So, it is same content of the how what percentage of sulfur is contented content in the rubber is the one that actually determines the tire quality if you can think about it that way. So, the sulfur content is the independent variable and these 5, 10, 15 percent are what we call as the levels of the independent variable. Hope you guys understand this and then we will now move to step 4 and 5. Okay. 
Uh, so, the step 4 is ideally uh, identify what is to be used, what is to be used to measure, to measure the effect of, the effect of the independent variable, independent variable. Okay. So, here you have to decide what is to be used, what is the phenomena that you are going to use the use to measure the effect of the independent variable okay. and why is it cause? So, this thing that is used to measure the effect, this is called as the the dependent variable. Okay. And data is usually collected on the dependent variable, on the dependent variable, variable and descriptive statistics descriptive statistics uh, is used to understand is used to understand the effects of independent the effects of independent variable if any, if there is any effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable, then we use descriptive statistics to understand that. So, in the previous case, we consider, considered a sulfur content as a factor for the tire performance. Okay. Now, the question is, how do you measure the tire performance? And one way to do it is mileage of the tire. So, one way to do it is you manufacture maybe 5 tires or something. So, tire 1, tire 2, tire 3, tire 4, tire 5, you manufacture 5 tires and you put them on different vehicles and run them and the first tires give you uh, 50,000 kilometers, second will give you 47,000 kilometers, third is 63,000 kilometers fourth is uh, 58,000 kilometers, fifth is 32,000 kilometers, something like this. So, these value, the mileage that you measure okay, and which you attribute it to the performance of the tire and you can say that sulfur content influences the tire performance which in turn influences the mileage. So, the mileage becomes the dependent variable. through which we measure the impact of sulfur content. So, here you use descriptive statistics in a sense what we are trying to do is okay, uh, we are basically trying to calculate what is the mean or average, okay, what is the standard deviation, okay, what is the median, then many other statistics range etcetera we calculate of this. From there, using that, we try to find out whether the tire is better. So, if you say that the rest of the tires in the market, compete, competitors, competitors are providing tires with, let us say, 35,000 kilometer mileage, that is the case. And then, if you find this average, let us say it comes to, let us say, 47,000 kilometers, then you could possibly say that, okay, reasonably looks like this tire is the new tire is better than the other tire and this new tire is better barely because of the fact that the sulfur content is the one that is influencing the superior tire performance. Okay. And also you should note that or you should remember that there can be more than one dependent variable. Okay. So, one another example of this is identify how many punctures happen, how many punctures 
of tire wall. Okay. This could be another dependent variable that you can see to measure the performance of the tire. So, you can always there is no need that there is only one dependent variable, there can be more than one dependent variable, this is quite applicable and allowed. Okay. Then we talk about the step 5, the fifth step okay, which is identify the correct statistical test, identify the correct statistical test that is obtained or identified identified from the information provided information provided by the independent variable variable dependent variable and descriptive stats. Okay. So, one example of this would be you are made tires 5 tires with 5 percent content then let us say 10 percent content 5 tires. So, you have like so, these are the 5 tires and you put the mileage 1 let us say 32,000, uh, 39,000, uh, 40,000, 33,000 something like this. Okay. Uh, so, you do your data on that and uh, let us say 34,000, these are the 5 data values you get and in 10 percent you got 36,000, 43,000, 41,000. 39,000, 48,000 something like this and then you can make tires, 5 tires made out of 15 percent like this okay. and then get the data values and then using these data values you can find what is the average of this row, average of this row etcetera, standard deviations etcetera and then you can decide whether you want to do an analysis of variance or paired t test. So, the data that data will tell you which is a probably a better test for you to use to identify what percentage of the sulfur, sulfur content gives you the best tire performance. Okay. So, the, uh, the statistical test that is to be used to identify to make the decision of what sulfur content to use to get the best tire performance should be done with the help of information that is provided by the independent variable this is the independent variable okay this is the independent variable and this is the mileage okay this is your dependent variable and here is your descriptive statistics okay so these three put together tells you what test to do and how to get the uh, how to identify the correct statistical test to uh, find make the correct decision okay and the last step step 6 okay it's not steps it is step 6 okay then once this is done use appropriate data analysis software or package whatever you want to call it okay for conducting the analysis. Okay. Most of the time when you have uh, in business in uh, practitioners world in practitioners world okay, data comes from BI business intelligence department. So, usually usually voluminous voluminous I believe okay check the spelling if the data is voluminous then you require software 
you're probably doing manually might not help and it might also take too much of time. So, so there are many options, many such software, okay. Starting with Microsoft Excel, okay. Then you have SPSS now made by IBM. Then you have SAS, that is the SAS Institute, R, the open source alternative of SAS, Lotus, Spreadsheets, etc. Okay. These are multiple options of the software that is available. Okay. In this course, this course, okay, we use Excel and R. Uh, that is a, there will be a tutorial of R in this course and you will learn what is R and how to use R for that. And for simple cases, we will also use Excel in this regard. Okay. Uh, with this, we reach the conclusion of the uh, process of how do we do analysis and how do we the stepwise process of conducting analytics. And now from here after, we will be starting to get into different tools of descriptive stats and uh, graphical display tools because descriptive stats is one important parameter as we see identifying the independent variable, dependent variable and looking at the descriptive stats helps us to understand what is the right statistical test that is to be used for the making the decision or doing the analysis. Okay. Uh, so, thank you for your patient hearing today and we will continue the rest of the lecture, uh, the rest of the new top, rest of this course using the new topics uh, in the coming classes. Thank you.